Joining me right now is former commanding general of the U.S. Army's Training and Doctrine Command and Fox News contributor General David Perkins. General, thanks very much for being here. Uh, what's your reaction to Mike's report and really the assessment from your standpoint of where we are on this war today? Well, good morning, Maria. Happy to be here. Um, it clearly looks like Putin understands that uh, his initial plan, which was pretty aggressive, uh, multi-axis attack, planning on speed and early capitulation, uh, is not going to come to fruition, and that his army and his command and control is really incapable of that. So they're starting to redefine success. And of course, whenever you redefine success, that means, by definition, you are not successful. So it looks like Putin is trying to consolidate gains uh, down in the east, the Donbass region. And you are seeing some sporadic attacks out west. Uh, I think that has a couple of parts. One is to possibly interdict uh, the supply and the logistics, as well as any additional supplies that are coming from Poland, as well as acts of intimidation and kind of going after some cultural and historic areas of Ukraine to go after the identity of the Ukrainians. So Putin is, um, I think, coming to realize that either the intelligence that he got or the capability that he was told his army had were not correct in either case. Yeah, really interesting. And then there's President Biden now walking back the remarks that he made in Poland about Putin. Here's Joe Biden. Watch. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principle, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. Mr. President, do you want Putin removed? Mr. President, were you calling for regime change? No. So, General, what'd you make of that? Now, of course, the White House says that he didn't mean Putin's power in Russia. We're not calling for regime change. Well, uh, Putin is always spinning some type of narrative, whether it was his tortured history at the beginning of the war, his constant anxiety about a NATO invasion. And the Ukrainians have been very good to not get involved in the daily tit-for-tat narrative battle with Putin and keep their eye on the ball. Putin is not a military man. He is a spy. And spies sort of live off narratives and uh, creating a story and I would say, again, the Ukrainians have it right. Don't, don't get sucked into his narrative. Don't get sucked into his tip or tat. Keep the eye on the ball, because what Putin is not good at, we've seen, is actually commanding large military formations. Yeah, but General, look, we continue to see this need. President Zelensky needs air power. He's asking for the MiG jets. Uh, he wants the West to have more courage and provide Ukraine with the fighter jets and the weapons that it needs to fight these troops. The mayor of Kiev, Vitaly Klitschko, joined me yesterday, and here's what he said. Weapons right now is main point. Is uh, Ukrainian uh, soldiers show the, the big will to win this fight. I tell you, uh, everybody surprised how Ukrainian army uh, uh, stay in uh, front of uh, one of the powerful army, uh, strongest army in the world, the Russian army, and because the Russian army they paid, uh, uh, receives the money for for this. We need the weapons. We need support with the weapons because. Uh, the weapons question is uh, the main priority right now uh, for Ukrainian soldiers, for our army. General, what do you think? Uh, are the allies doing as much as they could be doing for Ukraine? I think there is a path to win here, but it seems like the administration is making it seem like it's a given that Ukraine falls. Well, I agree uh, with Ukrainian statement there that the world is surprised at how well the Ukrainian soldiers are holding up against a much larger force. I think the thing to remember is war is not a competition of things. It's a competition of capability. And a capability is a combination of things with well-trained soldiers, well-led soldiers, well-maintained soldiers. And um, the Russians have a lot of things, but they can't put their training and the logistics and command and control on top of it. The Ukrainians have done a fantastic job of taking yeah. weapons that have been given to them that have a low training threshold, they have a low maintenance threshold, yeah. and they can put them into the fight 
the day after they receive them. And that's important. Some of the very sophisticated yeah. U.S. air defense systems, we send U.S. soldiers to school for a year to use them. So I would hesitate before sending them large formations of complicated weapon systems that would create a huge logistical burden and, in fact, continue to give them the weapon systems that we can put in the fight today like they are doing very well.